I'm Scott, and, uh, and I'm helping to bring clean drinking water to people all around the world. So at 19, I'm working at uh, a famous nightclub, a nightclub on 14th Street called Nell's, and uh, I'm, I'm co-producing this huge uh, R&B night. And you know, th this was uh, this was kind of a great life. You know, you walk in, you, you you're you're handed tons of drink tickets. You invite all your friends; they drink for free, and you actually get paid uh, to to party. So that um, that lasted you know, almost a decade. So when I was 28, uh, something happened that, that shook me a little and then started this, uh, this personal transformation or this, uh, this personal faith journey, really. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, and my right arm was, uh, felt numb. Something was, felt really wrong with my body. Now, if you looked at my, uh, my life, you would say, that dude is like completely destroying his body. I mean, he's going out at 10 p.m., he's coming back at noon, uh, you know, he's... He's hanging out in, in all of the wrong places. Uh, he's abusing his body with uh, a variety of substances. So no freaking wonder his arm is a little numb. You know, there was nothing to it. It just eventually went away. But I think I was faced, you know, for the first time really in that, that decade with my mortality. Like, what if there was something wrong with me? You know, what is the state of my life? What is the state of my soul? I, soon after that, I went to Punta del Esta in Uruguay on vacation. And, you know, I had my, my girlfriend and our, our friends. And I remember we rented this beautiful house and there were servants and horses to ride. And we spent $1,000 on fireworks, uh, you know, magnums of Dom Perignon everywhere. And I should have been really happy. And I just remember feeling so empty and so deeply, really miserable. Uh, and and it's, it's almost like the veil was was lifted or was starting to lift there. I had been raised with um, with a, a pretty traditional and, and meaningful faith background, and I realized like I was not right with God. I mean, I I was uh, I was no friend to God. Put it that way. I came back to New York, and now nightlife had been ruined for me. Really, I remember just starting to pray for a way out and say, you know, God, I I, I want to get out of this. I want it, my life to look different, and that's when. Uh, I, f I found kind of the way. Uh, what if my life looked 180 degrees opposite that it did right now? And, and what would that look like? Uh, and I started looking into humanitarian service. Thankfully, one organization, uh, amazing group called Mercy Ships, uh, I'd applied there to be a photojournalist. Mercy Ships was a, uh, I think they'd been around for about 26 years, operating hospital ships and bringing uh, the hospital to the poor. So we sail, we sail into Benin, the first country where we're stopping. And I knew that we were taking over a huge soccer stadium that people had been queuing up, lining up for days, and that some people had actually walked from Central Africa, like walked a month to see our doctors. And I knew we had about, I think it was about 1,000, 1,500 surgery slots. And there are like five, 6,000 people outside this stadium. And that was a really sobering moment, knowing that you know, the majority of them would be turned away, would have to go home just because we didn't have enough capacity. Off to the side, although Mercy Ships was, was primarily a medical organization, there was a, a guy called Leif, and he was going out into the villages, and he was helping to dig a few wells. And because I had to document everything on the ship, I would ride out with him in Land Rovers, and I would see the current sources of drinking water for these communities. And it was crazy. People were drinking from swamps and ponds and rivers. There was algae in the water. There were bugs. So I watched him go through this whole process of giving communities clean water and how easy it was to, to train the locals who wanted to work to dig a well. You know, our surgeries were pretty expensive. Here was a guy tackling a problem at, you know, $20, $30 a person off to the side. And that impact just stuck with me. In the operating theater, doctors would tell me that water and sanitation, or, or lack thereof of clean water and access to sanitation, was causing so much of this disease. So here was a guy off to the side kind of attacking you know, the root of so much of this sickness. And if 80% of people were really sick because of water, we would have had enough surgery slots. We wouldn't have had to turn anyone away. 
So as I came back to New York, although I had now, you know, done two outreaches and, and met, um, oh gosh, hundreds, you know, uh, probably a thousand patients, I'd taken 50,000 plus photographs. Um, I'd written a bunch of stories. This guy off to the side helping people get clean water really stuck with me. So when a community doesn't have clean water, uh, it, it affects so many things. And one of the things that surprised me most as I, as I just continued to learn about water was the economic benefit. Water makes people healthier, but it really makes them wealthier. And there's an amazing report by the United Nations that came out that says every dollar you invest in water and sanitation actually makes a community eight times richer sometimes as much as 24 times richer. It's a job uh, culturally, um, typically for the women and the children to go and, and get the water. And this is an incredible burden to them. They are often spending up to four hours a day back and forth to the water hole, um, being able to get that time back, being able to use that time productively, whether it's start, starting a small business and you know, selling rice or peanuts, at market, um, whether it's just, uh, some women will just tell us they'll spend more time with their kids to be better mothers. So having this extra time back, having this extra money back in the family, um, you know, having the improved health, the ability to, to get a better education, you know, water does so much. You get so much bang for your buck. I'm Scott Harrison and you are watching Epiphany.